This is a very unique toy. A lot of movie figures are unique in a lot of ways in how they accomplish their transformations and their general designs, but this, this does something very unexpected for a jet former and it works, kinda. So Breakaway here is a character in the Revenge of the Fallen video game and he had some cool missions like the one where you had to stop Megatron from coming back. There were rumblings of him getting a studio series toy, but nothing really came out of that. But Hasbro said in their answer to video game characters being in studio series, they said never say never. And you know, we might get some at some point. So that would be nice. This toy has a pretty unassuming jet mode. It's just plain and it's brown, not the most thrilling thing in the world, if I'm honest. His head is permanently poofing in the front there and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Maybe if the cockpit was either tinted or all black, it would have covered that spot. But as it stands, it's quite distracting to me. I really don't like that his head's just peeking out there. He is pretty clean though. Yeah, he's got some under kibble, but it's not the worst I've seen. And it's pretty consistent, leaving it feeling normal and natural. The plain deco does look very knockoff to me. It And the other versions of this mold do a much better job on the deco than this guy. So I want to get thrust and maybe air raid in the future. Oh, and he was rolling landing gear, so that's a plus. But that's all that the jet really has to offer. So what's so strange about this toy? Well, let me walk you through the transformation because it does everything you would not expect. Oh, I just cracked my knee. Okay, so this thing's transformation is very, very unique in the way that it just shifts all the mass of the airplane because all this that you see on the top is just shoulders. It's, it's very cool how it accomplishes all that. So you just like, it's unassuming, oh, you fold the legs down, whatever. You pop the chicken leg thing out and get the heel spurs going. And that's kind of normal for your movie jet formers where the legs kind of fold out and you can do the whole macro square walk thing. But that's, that's normal, right? Then you pop the wings up. Pop this down, pop the entire nose cone section forward. And now it's starting to get a bit weird. You unpeg these and bring them around. It's just really really interesting and baffling at the same time as to how this works and works as well as it does you just clip this in this actually attaches via a spring-loaded clip and then you just open the cockpit up like so i've done the head modification which i'll talk about in a minute and pop the head forward pop these back and the wings go down like so and yeah see it becomes all shoulders and it's kind of clean in the way that it works that's exactly how he looked in the video game and his original concept art so props to whoever designed this for making that work that's weird it's so unique in the way this toy uses the mass of the plane to become a robot basically the whole jet is on the back and the shoulders but it's not a quote-unquote kibli not supposed to be there way everything feels like it belongs and i like it the head though it's stuck in that position there's just too much plastic in a lot of areas but I did find a post on Cybertron.com from way back in the day that shows you how to properly modify the figure to get his head looking forward. And I did that mod and yeah, it looks a lot better and solves one of my major problems I had with the robot mode. Should you have to modify it? No, but it's there if you need to do it. It just requires cutting. So make sure you're comfortable with that before you go in with scalpel and try to slice everything off. You would think this guy would be super top heavy because the entire jet's hanging out on his upper body, but he really isn't. Mine has loose hips, but that's just because of its age. I can fix that easily. He has this chain gun thing that does rotate on his arm. However, I like it more as a sniper because I believe that's what he was classified as in the game. So that's how I like to view this as, even though it's, it's physically a chain gun. I do wish he was five millimeter compatible though. That would be cool, but oh well, that wasn't really a huge standard back then. The deco though still looks bland and boring. The thrust one for me is the superior deco for this mold. It helps give it that extra life. Man, I need to get one of those at some point. The Hasbro thrust is red. The Takara thrust is gray. There's two different versions and there's an air raid that's also gray. Then there's a two pack air raid or something. And then there's a the Takara break. There's so many redecos of this. His posing is pretty good for a 2009 toy. Once the head modification is done, you have a great range in the neck. 
but it's very difficult to get your hand in there. The waist joint is locked by the kibble, but you can just unlatch it to access that. And he has ankle pivots, which I was not expecting in the slightest. However, the sculpt of the hips does block his outward hip movement. So that's a bit annoying. You could probably round out the sculpt around the hips a little bit to make it a little bit more poseable, but I don't want to do that. I really like this toy. It's fun. It's very interesting. And that's what makes it stand out on a shelf, even with its drab and boring colors. I definitely recommend one. $30 max used, 40 sealed is what I would advise because that's usually how much I see this thing going for. Those are Canadian dollars, by the way. I got this for 20, 20 bucks. And I feel like it was totally worth 20 bucks. It's a really, really fun deluxe. I really hope he gets like a Voyager if they do put him in Studio Series because that would be nice. But we'll I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But that's my look at Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Breakaway. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, and I got Motormaster finally. Yay.